This is an SMD soldering practice kit that I got from Amazon. I'm going to cut right to the chase. And you see the chase lights. All those LEDs, they worked. Indicating that most of the parts were on correctly. And further cutting to the chase, I'm going to show the SOP8. This is a 555 timer. So what you want to do is basically for all these parts, you want to tack on one side, get it in place, and then solder the other pads. And I'm going to do the same exact thing for the SOP16, which is a 4017 IC. And I'm going to do the exact same thing for the QFP44 pin IC. So you see, I, I, I'm doing these pretty good. Uh, I may be using a little too much solder. Uh, and I may be touching the uh, leg of the, uh, the IC a little bit too long. See, that's too much solder. The solder should go so you still see the outline of, of the pin from the uh, IC like that. But you see, I couldn't do that. But that one in the one, the second one from the right is about right. The, the last one on the right is about right, too. This one has way too much solder. But I'm not going to bother to go back and, and uh, clean up that solder because it's only going to apply more heat if you clean up the solder and remove the solder. So these go fast. I didn't even use flux on these. I think I used the flux pen. With this, I used um, some tacky flux. And um, again, the same thing. You, you get one pin lined up and soldered on. And then you could go right down the row and do the rest. I'm not crazy about drag soldering. So I just do one pin at a time. But if you use flux, it's very easy. I'm using a very fine tip, uh, pointy tip, soldering iron tip. Now this is a 0.5 millimeter um, distance between the pins from the center of each pin to the center of the next pin is 0.5 millimeters. So that whole IC is only one centimeter across or square, that whole QFP package. Now these are dummies, they don't do anything, but I did test them out and there's, they give you test points to test them. And it has kind of a cross hatch underneath so you could test all of them. And you could also test for bridges. So they all worked except for one. And that was pin 27 on the, uh, the second one I did, which was the one on the left. Now notice I got a big blob of solder on there, a bridge. And I cleaned that right up with some uh, solder wick or solder braid. And you can also clean that up with just a soldering iron and some flux. But sometimes they're stubborn and they won't come out. So here's the finished product. The finished uh, QFP. 44s. And they're not really clean. That part I cleaned. Some of it I cleaned. The most difficult parts were the network resistors. Now these are four resistors built in one package. All they are are independent resistors here. And they're 240 ohms each, I believe. And what I did is I tested these with the meter as I went along. Uh, you could see how the two in the middle have that loop connecting them on the, um, on, on the trace. So I learned by the fifth one to just do these very carefully and slowly. Um, and also to try and get them straight. Uh, in the future, I'll try and get them even straighter. But these are very tiny. These are really challenging to get these just right. Um, I did get a bridge on about the third one from, from the start, 
The first two I was lucky, the third one I got a bridge. And the bridge, when the bridge gets in those little notches, it's very hard to get it out. So the best thing to do is just do these right from the start with no mistakes. Now it looks like maybe I'm shaking a lot because you see that tip of the soldering iron. I mean, you have to realize this is through a microscope and that tip is only shaking like half a millimeter. So I'm not sure if that's a Z or a two, but I, I pretty, I pretty much think it's a two because they were 240 ohms across each resistor. So again, you just want to be very patient with these and you can use flux, but I find flux makes a big mess. I'm using no clean flux too. That paste I use is no clean paste. Um, comes in a little syringe. So here's, here are those uh, 603 8PR, 8P floor R, whatever you want to call them. They're four resistors, eight pins, 8P floor R. 0603. So here's some more 0603 parts. Oh no, these are 0805. These are at the bottom of the board. These are the 5490 ohm resistors. Now I did these, I mass produced these. I did all 10 on one side and then all 10 on the other side. And somehow I came out with three cold solder joints. So maybe you need to hold the uh, the soldering iron down on the pad for those bigger resistors a little longer to make sure you get a good connection. But I had no trouble with the 50. There's, there's a big area of 50 of those 805 resistors and I had no trouble with any of those. The capacitors are a little tricky because you want them to be flat on the board and sometimes because they're shaped funny and you push them into the uh, liquid solder, the heated solder, and they'll tilt up and that will get you into a lot of trouble. So just be very patient with them. That one is nice. That one came out nice. This one I'm going to put a little too much solder on. Uh, maybe that's nice. Now these are the 603 resistors. These I'm quite comfortable with. I also found certain times of the day I, I have steadier hands. The morning and early afternoon I have steadier hands than at night and the evening and at night. So these are 10K resistors, uh, 603. So they're small, but they're very doable. So I had no problem whatsoever with this row of 10. And again, you see me uh, tapping that tweezer on the board on the PCB to get the uh, resistor to be loose and then flat. You want the resistor to lay on the PCB flat before you push it into place. So here I'm just doing the other side. And I think I've used uh, some flux here. So you can see I've used too much solder again so rather than add more solder which has flux in it uh, to make the end shiny on the uh, side I tacked down I'm just putting a little flux on there and then touching it with the tip of the solder and that will make a nice uh, smooth clean shiny uh, solder joint Again, a little too much solder. So these are the real trick. These don't do anything for the, uh, as far as the LED chaser lights, but these are the 402 resistors. They're uh, 46K each and they're not marked. And the same technique, tack down one side, 
Now these are one millimeter long and half a millimeter wide. So these are real tiny and they're, they're real easy to lose when you take them out of the package. They do give you two extra ones. Which I must admit I needed. So you see I did use flux. So that first one is nice. So they're all done. You'll notice the one in the lower right is crooked, but the meter says it reads 460K ohms. So I'm good with that. I'm not gonna mess with that crooked one. The diodes are basically easy, but I tried to mass produce them. And one lesson I learned is to stop every couple of components and take a break because sometimes you, you lose your focus after like five components. And what happened, here's the finished product. And oops, that one's crooked. Not only is it crooked, but it's raised on the right side. You can't make mistakes with the LEDs. These are 805 LEDs, so they're pretty easy. But you don't want the soldering iron to ever touch the LED at all. Just to touch the um, pad. Melt the solder. And let the solder flow to the LED. That one I could have held the solder on a little longer. The soldering iron a little longer. So thanks for watching. Give me a like, subscribe, rumble, share with a friend. And stay tuned.